Kelly, retired, a three-time Super Bowl champion, coming to a TV booth near you, you, you. Patriots <laughs> fans, they already saw you say that you would never look good in another uniform. So will you continue to look good in a New England Patriots uniform? I think that is a fact. I will always only look good in a patch uniform, um, but I will no longer look good in a patch uniform going forward. Uh, I'm officially uh, retiring from the NFL. I, I'm happy for him, but I don't like it because he's playing at such a high level. Why now? I need answers. Joined right now by newly retired, ouch, three-time All-Pro, three-time Super Bowl champion, and a good friend of mine, Devin McCourty. How are you? I'm good. Don't hurt yourself. Don't get too excited. I, I know. know it's my first time on I here. Know. <clears throat> Love your repping. I mean, it took too long, if you ask me, but you've been busy with another great season. <laughs> you led this team in interceptions this season. Dev, a lot of things to talk about. You're still playing at a really high level. Why now? Um, I would say, first off, I, I wanted to always leave the game not being like an absolute bum and, and just stinking it up out there. Um, so for me, <laughs> mentally, um, I, I just had enough. Uh, I think it was to the point at the end of the year, I kind of knew um, that I probably was going to retire. Um, but I think I needed to make sure uh, that's how I felt mentally and then physically, seeing if my body wanted to give it a go. But, you know, having surgery, getting at a point in my rehab where it was time to, like, start working out and getting ready for the season again, I just didn't have it in me. And I knew at that point, probably the last, like, week and a half, two weeks that, um, I was going to make this decision and was just figuring out what the best way uh, was to go about it. But I'm excited for what's next. And uh, I'm excited to look back and just, you know, have a couple of drinks and just reminisce uh, about my career <laughs> and all the good times. I mean, you have a couple of Super Bowls to choose from. I ask these kind of questions to Gronk when he hops on the show. So what is that one memory that first pops up into your head? Like if you had to frame, you have these frames with your beautiful kids and shout out to them and Doc, who I love and adore, and it's probably supporting you through this retirement process that can't be easy. What photo are you putting in that frame from your entire illustrious career? Well, that, that one behind me is a pretty good one at the Super Bowl, but it's a... Uh... It's, there's a time uh, when we beat the Rams in Super Bowl 53. Um, we're on the sideline, and confetti starts to fall, and J-Max on a knee. I'm just standing over top of him, so excited, so happy for him. Um, so I would say if someone said frame a moment, I'd be that moment. So I got a big shout-out to Jared Rita on uh, our video department. Took that picture on the sideline. Um, ah. Great picture that, to me, uh, really captured that whole year uh, watching a bum like J Mac come to our team, get his first Super Bowl. Um, and I got to just witness that uh, as a big brother. Uh, it was an awesome feeling. And you held the, the Rams to three points, so it doesn't doesn't uh, it's not <laughs> lost on me. You would pick you would pick a 13 to 3 low scoring news fest of a Super Bowl to be <laughs> your absolute favorite. Uh, okay, so you're you know the tweet was it's not about the it was something about the the journey or where you're going. Not about what is the destination. You have this retirement announcement, which is so cool and amazing that you do it to your brother Jason. He's clearly focused on his career, which he is crushing on Good Morning Football which you visited recently. Let's manifest this thing. What is the ideal situation for Devin McCourty? Well, right now is to get another job. Like you said, you know, Doc support me through this. Doc does not want yeah. me home. She hates <laughs> when I have extended time at home. I'm at home still being a captain, trying to run the show, saying we should do this like that. Uh, why are we not waking up earlier? So she wants me gone. Uh, so I'm hoping with, you know, making a decision now, retiring, uh, that my name could be thrown in there for some of these TV jobs. Uh, just get an opportunity uh, to go out there and just improve. You know, I think that's the biggest thing from watching Jay. Uh, I watched his first ever show on Good Morning Football and then being on with him this past, that past week, uh, it was just so cool because I'm like, man, this guy's actually good at this. Like, he's reading a teleprompter, <laughs> going back and forth. I'm like, where's this guy from? Like, how did he get this? So um, it's just for me, just getting that opportunity. I'm excited about it. Um, and I would say that's what's been pretty cool. I didn't think when I signed back to New England the last couple of times that there would come a point in my career that I'll be walking away from football, will be so excited about what's next. Um, it's just, I think, hard for us football players to imagine. Uh, so to be at that point and to know that, you know, there could be some good things ahead for me uh, is very exciting. And, you know, I'm ready to kind of take on that challenge.
I mean, I think your brother learned it from you. And don't talk about how you just realized you're good at media when you worked with me 10 years ago. That was fun. NBC Sports That was just Boston. a random Monday. That was a random Monday. We would pull up to Quick Slants. Uh, I would have come off a big win Sunday, had a good time, rolled through Quick Slants. Uh, you would come with all the energy and candy. Uh, we just go out there and just show Tom. <laughs> we show Tom Carr what to do. So that was good times. That, that wasn't work, though. Yeah. Do you want? You could do a million things. You do something already. You have a good reputation, uh, like camaraderie with guys who are really innovative in the media space. I know that. You could do your own thing. You could do the I am athlete sort of vibe, Brandon Marshall thing. You could go work for a network. Uh, you're just open to everything. Is there something that you prefer? Do you want to be in the booth? I, I would say right now, I only got to do that for 10 minutes at the broadcast boot camp that the NFL puts on. Yeah last March. So I'm not 100% sure. I'm most comfortable right now doing the studio shows um, that I've done. And then uh, eventually, uh, me and Jay do want to get back to, you know, I don't know if it'll be the same kind of structure that we had our podcast going before. Um, but we do want to get back to being able to do some type mm. of podcast or uh, scripted series, something like that, of being able to kind of <sighs> bring out something else that, you know, guys are doing. But, you know, I think between you know, the pivot and I am athlete, like they're crushing that space. So yeah. um, it's been fun to just watch those guys and see what they've done. So um, just trying to build off that and kind of use uh, what we've done all of these years and, and find a different avenue to kind of be in. And we have to mention the, the New Heights podcast because you got two brothers there who are who are skyrocketing crushing to the it. top of these media charts, crushing it. So I saw Travis Kelsey last night at an Oscars party here in LA, and I saw one other NFL. I mean, you know, Travis is Mr. Hollywood now. Here he is eating an <laughs> In-N-Out burger. I'll ask you the the other guy that I saw that's uh, in an NFL royalty world. Guess who I saw last night at the Vanity Fair party? Was it Edelman? No, that's a, such a good guess. I shouldn't. I should have given uh, you options. No, I saw. I saw your. I saw one of your favorite people, Robert Kraft, someone who you have so much respect for, uh, and I love seeing him. He's a bright light. He's incredible. And listen, most people don't spend their careers in one place, and most people in the NFL have short careers. You did your entire 13-year run in New England. How special was that to you? And that relationship with Robert Kraft, he interrupts your press conference. It's so beautiful. Yeah, it was awesome. And I think um, not only to play there, but the ability because of the extended time being in one place to get to know, you know, RKK, Jonathan, Dan, Josh, like all his kids and to be around their family uh, to me was probably the best part of that. And um, you know, towards the end of my career, all some of the special moments for RKK, his 80th birthday party, his wedding, um, as Jonathan was going through the invitations, just think of just to think of me and to send me an invite and be able to be there. And, you know, yeah. obviously they shared in a lot of great moments for me on and off the field, but to, you know, kind of be able to do the same thing uh, as a friend has been awesome. And I think just being able, uh, you know, from your time, you know, that you spend here up here to be in this area just this team, the fans and the fan base, like they look at you as like, man, we love this guy because he was loyal to New England. He stayed here. Um, and for me, that's been awesome. These last like probably month and a half, two months of just walking around, everybody would see me and they'd be like, what are you going to do? You got to give us one more year. You have to. Yeah. Um, so just being able to enjoy that. And uh, I love this community. This whole New England community uh, has accepted me. I mean, I've been able to grow and do so many different things. Uh, it's an honor for me to look back on my career and say, man, for 13 years, uh, I got to not only play here, but I got to serve a community um, that accepted me and was, and was mm. grateful. And I was grateful uh, that they accepted me and, you know, everything that I learned from the New England community. It's really well said, and I, I, you know, you're talking about this, and I'm thinking about free agency, and it starts in an hour, and I'm thinking about a guy like Levante David, who's such a stud, played every year of his career in Tampa Bay. He is that, and he's facing this decision of, Tampa doesn't really have the money. Do I go there on less money? Do I go take more money somewhere else? And and it means something to be in that rare company of just playing for one squad. So I imagine if he's going to see this or watching this, like that's going through his head. You were loved up there and are loved and will forever be because you were the heart and soul of the Patriots defense. Tom Brady did his thing and you did it for, for all of that. Let's check out some of that leadership on display, courtesy of NFL Films. 
Uh-oh. Hey, fellas, you look around this circle. This ain't our plan. We didn't all think we'd be here. You thought you'd be going to free agency. You could have went anywhere. You battled to be on this team. You was in Detroit. You thought you went to Philly. You didn't know you'd be back. You got traded here. You thought you'd get traded. I thought I'd be gone. There's a reason. God playing this, fellas. Let's dominate. Take advantage. No tomorrow. Let's dominate today. Dominate on three. One, two, three. Dominate. <laughs> Where was that energy Mondays at NBC Sports Boston? <laughs> <laughs> I had already used it Monday morning. That was the problem. Are you insane? That is so insane. It's, um, I will say this. I remember, um, my, I think it was my second year, uh, we had veterans my rookie year, Brandon Merriweather and James Sanders, um, who really led all of that and, and led the team. And then the next year, they were both gone. And it was kind of me and Pat Chung. And uh, anybody that knows Chung, Chung's looking at me like, I'm not, I'm not giving yeah. a speech and, and talking <laughs> to guys. Uh, so I just remember being in that circle and being like, man, I don't know what I just said to these guys. Um, it was probably terrible. And then I would say being around Matthew Slater and seeing the preparation, seeing the thought that he put in anytime he talked to the team, uh, I would say moving forward, I really looked at that time with those guys in that circle uh, as an honor that other men would look at me in a circle and would say, man, I can't wait for this guy to get me going. Uh, I took a lot of pride in that and I want to deliver. I want to give them, you know, an extra um to go out there and play and remind them uh, why we were going out there to play together as a secondary. Uh, and, you know, I think for me, that's probably one of the, the things I cherish most, the secondaries I played in because there were so many close connections. Uh, we knew each other's kids. We knew each other's struggles. Um, we were there for each other. And to me, that, you know, call it minute to two minutes that we got uh, was kind of highlighting why we were going out there to play together. And the plan was to go out there and dominate and look good and play good together. I love the idea that you just, like, black out when you're doing that. <laughs> just go out there and, and have a great game, which I love. Matthew Slater, I believe, is coming back for his 97th season <laughs> this year, which is one of the wildest stories in the NFL because he's such an inspiration. There's no one more beloved than him. But outside of him, who are you handing the keys to that Patriots locker room from a leadership perspective to? Um, I think two guys that stick out for me, I always think defense, but, you know, obviously I'll start because I feel like if I don't mention this, everybody runs with it. Matt Jones is going to mm. be a leader on the Patriots. He's a captain. He's a quarterback. And Dave, uh, Dave Andrews. Uh, and then obviously the other captains this past year, Dietrich Wise uh, and Jawan Bentley. But I always like when I get that question, I think the captains are obvious. Um, but I think other guys, like, depending on what works out with Jacoby Myers and Jonathan Jones, to me, are two guys um, that have a ton of leadership qualities. Um, but I think they they remind me of myself. And I'll throw Kyle Duggar in there as well. Of You have leadership mm. qualities, but there's leaders all around you. So you don't need to do that. Like, it, it doesn't make sense for you to talk after, you know, either I talk or Slate talks. Um, but I think those guys will now look around and be like, all right, we got to replace the energy uh, the passion that Deb had when he spoke to the team. And I think those those are some guys that will step up, uh, depending on how free agency works out. Um, if, you know, Jay Jones and Jacoby are gone, then I think Doug will look yeah. around and say even more now, like, hey, man, I know I'm quiet, but these guys need me. I know the process. Uh, if not me, then who? So uh, I expect some of those younger guys that are homegrown to really step up. Dev, you're too media savvy. You didn't fall for my Mac Jones thing by, you know, leaving him out of that answer. Every, but are you telling me? Every time I don't bring Mac up, I get killed. <laughs> well, you can't. But listen, there's a lot of controversy around Mac. There's a lot of criticism around Mac. So you and how he handles things and what he's like. What do you mean? Because he's demonstrative out on the field. He hasn't, you know, like he had huge shoes to fill. That's probably why. Are you telling me that Mac Jones is the future of this franchise? Yeah, like, so for me, I don't understand. I'll say this. All these young quarterbacks come in, and it's like they get crushed right away. Then we watch Jalen Hurst. We give him time to develop, and now everybody's like, did you see the Super Bowl he had? Man, he might have been better than Mahomes. And it's like, yeah, he got drafted for a reason. We see Tua down in Miami. We finally get some stability around him, mm. get him with Mike McDaniel, a guy who's run offense, been in San Francisco. Oh, man, he's actually a good player. And I look at Mac, who came in last, came in as a rookie under Josh McDaniels, 
show so much promise, ended up in the Pro Bowl as an alternate, uh, played really well for us, gave us a chance to go compete in the playoffs, which wasn't didn't go well at all, but gave us a chance to be in the playoffs two years removed from the greatest quarterback to ever play the game. We were back in the playoffs. Like, you never hear that. Then last year, it's kind of like a new kind of testing things out with, you know, Matty yeah. P and Joe Judge kind of running the offense, which it didn't work. And, you know, the bad thing for Mac is a lot of that goes right to him. Like, he wasn't good. He is his fault. It's his fault. And I just don't see it that way. I think he's a young guy who now get a chance to be with Billy O, uh, a proven offensive mind in mm-hmm. this league. Uh, and I think he's going to go, and I True. think it's just going to skyrocket. Especially when they get DeAndre Hopkins, which they better do. Bill, Bill better get that kid for Billy O. That would be nice to see those two uh, reunited. Uh, Dev, the other thing I'm going to say is let's cut that tape off and send it right to ESPN, to CBS, to <laughs> NFL Network, to whoever, because the way that you got just so heated for Mac Jones, I could listen to that all day. You were amazing. You'll do whatever you want to do for now. Relax, have a couple beers, reminisce, and enjoy yourself. And when you're ready to party, come out here with me and Gronk and Edelman, okay? I like that idea. I might, I might come out there and, and hang out. Thanks, Kay. I would love that. Much love to your family. No, thank you and congratulations on an incredible field your, uh, career. You're one of the best guys on and off the field. And Matt Jones, who knew? All pro quarterback, <laughs> better than Tom Brady. That's what Devin just said. Better uh, than Tom. Don't do that to me.